Hey everyone, thanks for joining. Uh, we'll just give a couple more seconds for people to come in the room. Uh, my name is Vivek. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Weave. At Weave, we help people leaders to engage and motivate their teams from anywhere. Uh, today, we're going to be doing uh, a quick overview of Weave, but most of the time is actually going to be spent on an interactive demo where you're going to get hands-on talking with our chatbot. Uh, um, we want this process to be as interactive as possible, so please put questions in the chat. My colleague Omar is on the line um, and we'll be reviewing any messages that come in. Uh, and then if everything goes as planned, um, once we have a chance to um, talk with our chatbot, we'll actually go and review the results of what that conversation um, looks like. Uh, now, before we dive in, I just wanted to give a quick introduction about myself. Now, um, in a previous life, I was a consultant for Fortune 100 companies. My job was moving from company to company in different industries of different sizes. Uh, where I started to see a trend, which was this growing disconnect between employees and leaders for a multitude of reasons, faster pace of work, new technologies, and obviously most recently, this giant shift to remote work. Uh, and the question became, how do we build strong employee leader relationships, no matter where we are, which is why we built Weave. Um, so as we all know, we are living in the new normal. There is this implicit understanding among senior leaders that employees have to feel safe, heard, and supported. In fact, since the start of the pandemic, 95% of senior leaders are now demonstrating a sincere interest in employee well-being and safety, which is up from just 60% only six months ago, which puts us at this very pivotal point for the employee experience, where employee needs are rapidly changing from month to month, Work from home is here to stay for a large percentage of us. And we need a way to overcome challenges that didn't exist when we could just grab a conference room, which is why we built Weave, the first employee engagement platform built with what we call empathetic AI. Uh, what is empathetic AI? Meet Kim. Kim is a always available chatbot that has organic conversation with employees to understand their issues and needs. She lives on your messaging channel. Most commonly we're on channels like Microsoft Teams or Slack, um, but we also do email, SMS, as well as several others. Now, Kim has got this very interesting combination of anonymity plus empathy, which creates the perfect space for very candid feedback. In fact, some employees feel that Kim is uh, a new friend that they can confide in because they feel that they're not being judged, that they can talk transparently with confidence. Now, there are two ways that an employee can talk with Kim. They can reach out to her whenever they want to uh, escalate any issues. Or more commonly, when leaders want to understand employee thoughts or sentiment on particular topic areas, Kim can reach out and have that conversation at scale. Now, out of the box, we cover um, close to 50 use cases including things like transition to remote work, business continuity, morale and well-being, um, as well as any custom use cases that you wanna cover. Uh, um, now, I wanna just jump right into actually having a uh, conversation with Kim where we can get all of you chatting with her. Uh, you should be receiving a email from Kim uh, in, in the next few seconds here, which is gonna have a link to uh, um, a conversation. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same here. Give a second for this email to come in. Now we're gonna be playing the role of um, a employee in a company who has not talked to Kim before. So you're actually gonna go through a quick onboarding where you'll get introduced to Kim for the first time. You'll be able to ask her a couple of questions to understand why should I talk to you, who are you, et cetera. Uh, um, and then we're gonna go into a conversation about uh, um, uh, employee thoughts on the company's COVID-19 response. Now, when we get to that conversation itself, uh, you're gonna be able to answer completely open text, however you want. And then Kim is gonna do her best to basically be empathetic ask the right follow-up questions uh, um, and, and really get to the root of employee issues. Uh, um, now, as I mentioned, we integrate to a variety of messaging channels. Uh, for the purpose of this demo, we're obviously using our uh, email integration. 
So when you get that email and you open up the link, it's going to go into um, a uh, web chat, completely mobile compatible. Uh, and I'll just open that up here. Now, if you're having uh, issues in getting this email, just go ahead and, and send a message in chat and Omar will get you set up. Uh, um, for everyone else, let's go ahead and jump into this conversation itself. Uh, so Kim is introducing herself to employees for the first time uh, um, as the feedback chatbot for the company. I'm just gonna say nice to meet you. Uh, where Kim is gonna kind of give a quick introduction on who she is, now, one of the most important questions is, why should I talk to you? Why is it important that um, uh, as an employee I actually engage with Kim? Uh, so here, Kim is, is going to let me ask a couple of questions and the ones that we find to be most important when building trust in the feedback process are things like, what are we gonna talk about? Is this process anonymous? What's happening with my data? And how often are we gonna chat? Uh, uh, so we'll see, what are we gonna chat about? You'll see that uh, Kim is available to chat about pretty much any topic. The main and important thing is that uh, it's about building a process where employees feel that they have this always available resource whenever they need to escalate any kinds of issues. Uh, of course, all conversations with Kim are entirely anonymous and secure. Uh, we aggregate all data um, on the reporting side, which you'll see in just a second. Uh, um, and typically, companies tend to have Kim reach out to employees um, bi-weekly or, or maybe once a month. Conversations usually don't take more than two to three minutes. Uh, um, now, when you reach this question about setting uh, a preferred schedule, just go ahead and say that you're free to chat whenever uh, so we can jump into the conversation immediately. Um, now, another important thing that we do is every time Kim reaches out, employees are actually able to ask a few more questions to understand why it's important that they engage with this specific conversation. Uh, um, so in this case, I'm able to see that Omar is the one that sent this conversation. He's the one on the other end that's gonna be reading the data, uh, um, which might have an impact on uh, if I'm gonna engage in this specific conversation or not. Uh, the last thing I wanna mention is that Kim customizes to each specific employee based off of some of the answers that we just gave her. For example, she's gonna reach out at the time that's best for my personal schedule. She's also gonna reach out on the channel that's best for me, meaning I could be chatting with Kim on Microsoft Teams and my coworker could be chatting with her on SMS. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump into this conversation where Kim wants to first know if my company Acme is doing as much as I can to make me feel safe during the pandemic. Um, you know, I'm gonna say, yes, I think I'm doing a pretty good job. And all my spelling mistakes and this kind of stuff gets fixed up in the back end. Uh, um, now she wants to know if leadership has been sending timely communications. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna say no. Um, not really sure what's going on until last minute. We'll see here that uh, Kim wants to use a couple of kinds of natural language processing, sentiment analysis in order to not only understand what I'm saying, but also be able to empathize, ask the right follow-up questions, etc. We'll give just a second, sometimes doing the screen share at the same time, slows things down. just gonna jump over to this pre-baked version that I have here. Um, so when I say something like, I'm not really sure what's going on, um, Kim's gonna kind of want to reassure me that 
this is something that's important to the company as well as ask kind of the right follow-up question in this case are we adapting well to changes in work conditions uh, um so i responded here saying no i wish we could be working from home working remote uh, um and now kim wants to kind of follow up again what would make that kind of transition smoother uh here i'm going to say something like um let's see we're staffing assignments needs to be in office. And typically, conversation is going to be a couple of questions. And Kim is going to ask if there's anything else that I want to share. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and say no. Uh, and that will be the end of this conversation. Now I want to go ahead and see if we've started to get any responses in on this conversation. If uh, you finished uh, your conversation with Kim, if you can just go ahead and close out of that window so we can get those results in. Uh, let's see if we've started to get some reporting. Okay, perfect. Uh, so reporting with Kim happens in real time as soon as we start to get responses from uh, employees. Uh, by default, we're going to show the overall sentiment across all the conversations that Kim's been having, as well as the dominant emotions that were present in those conversations. Uh, um, we're going to see how that emotion and sentiment has been changing over time, so we know what actions are working, what's not working. And below, we're going to see all the conversations that have taken place. In this case, we just have this one conversation about uh, the COVID-19 response. I'm able to see a kind of quick preview of the most important pieces of feedback that came out of that, uh, as well as some data on my response rate, the total messages, et cetera. Uh, now, before I dive into this conversation itself, uh, I want to quickly show you that the reporting aspects are very flexible in the sense they're sliceable, they're diceable by any combination of user properties, meaning I could do something like um, filter to my female engineers in New York or my marketing department in Texas. Uh, um, I don't know why I'd want to do that filter, but it's easy to slice and dice in that sense. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and jump into um, the specific responses here. So we'll see for this conversation what the sentiment was, what the emotion is, as well as some dynamic topic analysis that takes place. So we can see here, um, just a quick glance on, on a word cloud, what are the main topics that are being discussed. Uh, but when I dive in here, I'm going to see a breakdown of all the topics, the sentiment that aligns to that specific topic. And on click, I'll see all of the utterances, all the responses from users that contain that topic, and the emotion for it. Now, the idea here is at a quick glance of color and at how many unhappy faces I see, um, I should have a pretty good idea of the areas that we need to be focusing on. In this case, it looks like remote work. Um, now, when we want to dive in even deeper, we can go ahead and uh, uh, jump into a specific question where we're going to see all of the responses uh, um, that came into that question. I can sort through by emotion, by keyword. Uh, um, one other thing I want to mention here is that uh, you can share these dashboards with anyone, even if they're not a user within Weave. And we're just going to give them basically single time access to a dashboard. What's quite cool about this is that, um, say, I am in a leadership position, I'm viewing data for the entire organization. I could put in some filters that specify maybe to a specific team or geography and then share the report with uh, um, maybe my mid level management they'll be able to filter down further, but they're not able to filter up beyond what I already set for them. Um, now, at this point, we have a pretty good idea of what are the issues, and now it's time for the next steps to take action. Uh, and broadly speaking, we see two kinds of responses come out of employee feedback. So there are, there's feedback that we know how to respond to and feedback where we need a little bit more information. So for the former, this is where our broadcasting functionality comes in. 
Broadcasting is a very straightforward functionality. Basically, whatever you put in as a response to a particular issue, Kim is going to relay out to the team on your behalf. Uh, um, we see this functionality used a lot um, when there's quick response to issues. For example, at the start of the pandemic, we had a lot of people that were bringing up issues with childcare and having to take morning meetings while at the same time getting their kids ready for virtual school. Uh, um, we saw leaders use broadcasting functionality to basically say, hey, we heard you, we're pushing all meetings back by 30 minutes or an hour because it was like a very quick response to, to um, uh, feedback that was raised. This functionality is also used to say, um, hey, we heard you and we're working on the issue that you brought up. The important part is that the feedback process moves from being this black box where employees feel like they're just giving feedback but seeing nothing in return into something that is much more engaging and transparent, um, which builds trust with employees, ultimately getting you even higher quality feedback come the future. Now, what makes this functionality a little bit more special is that I can actually target it based off of the emotion of how people responded to a particular topic area, meaning I might want to reach out only to people that were frustrated or sad when talking about this particular issue. Um, now, not all feedback is that easy to respond to, and that's where our crowdsourcing functionality comes in. So here, Kim is going to reach out to members of the team saying, hey, a lot of, we're seeing a lot of unhappiness or frustration around this particular issue. Uh, um, we're trying to improve it. Do you have suggestions for improvement? Uh, we can also set up a automated check-in flow where Kim is going to continue to check in over time saying, hey, you told me about this issue. Uh, you even gave me some suggestions of how to improve it, but uh, has a needle moved? Has it actually been resolved? We're actually just gonna quickly jump over now to an example of that, where we're gonna get real-time updates of employee suggestions coming in for a particular uh, um, topic area, as well as real-time updates of, is this issue resolved? Have we been successful in solving for it? Uh, um, the primary point and purpose of Weave is not the cool AI conversational pieces, although um, that is something that makes a difference in terms of engagement to quality of response. The most important piece is that we are building a process and a true path to improvement. Uh, now this path starts with having conversations to uncover employee issues. We then use broadcasting to be responsive to those issues, closing the feedback loop. If we don't know how to be responsive, we use crowdsourcing to actually engage employees in the solution building process. Uh, and then finally, continue to check in with them to ensure that issues are being resolved. Uh, what we see ultimately is that 88% uh, of employees prefer the chat-based experience to that of like a more traditional survey and an 18X faster issue to action cycle on average. Now we've covered uh, a lot of information pretty quickly. I'm gonna go ahead and pause here to see if there's any questions. Omar, if you've seen anything come in chat, let me know. Well, if you do have any questions, go ahead and ping them in. Otherwise, we've got plenty of other content to cover. Okay. Uh, uh, oh, I think we got something in. Yeah, how can it be anonymous if it's via email and our company has archiving measures in place? Uh, um, so there's a there's two ways um, I, I want to answer that question. First is um, the anonymity piece is on the reporting aspect. So uh, a company may know that they've sent you that email, but the actual conversation itself doesn't take place in your email server. It takes place in the web chat. So when the data actually gets sent over to this reporting piece here, there's no names attached. Data is always in aggregate. At least five responses have to come in before uh, um, managers are able to see anything. The other important piece that we found is um, 
more than just anonymity is transparency, meaning employees should know who is on the other end that's going to be able to read their feedback. For example, I may have a scenario where we're asking for leadership feedback, and I know that that specific leader is on the other end that's going to be able to read it, um, which may mean that I start to lose trust in the feedback process or I don't feel like engaging. What we found to be very critical is those scenarios are going to happen if we're very upfront about who's on the other end reading the data, an employee may not engage in that one-off instance, but they'll retain trust in the process and they'll continue to engage the next time we reach out um, and over time. Uh, any other questions before I, I jump into some other features? Uh, now, what I want to show you is some more of the capabilities of Kim, uh, the chatbot. So let's jump into a, another conversation here. So with the, the COVID-19 response conversation, we kind of saw what the introductory and onboarding experience with Kim looks like. Uh, um, we, we had a chance to answer a couple of questions. Uh, um, now I want to show uh, some of the more advanced capabilities that we have through Kim. So in this conversation, um, Kim is reaching out to talk to me about my project that ended last week. Uh, this specific conversation is about decision-making influence. Uh, um, so first, Kim wants to know, do I feel like I had influence over the decisions made during the project? I'm going to say something like, I felt like my ideas were ignored. Um, now, as I mentioned before, Kim is using natural language processing under the hood to understand uh, that this is an area to dive in deeper on. Specifically, is this a trend that I'm seeing at the company? I'm going to say yes. Some of us have to keep ourselves, the rest have it. Um, now, we're also using emotional analysis. In this case, this is an area that Kim wants to empathize with me. She knows that this is something that's frustrating. Let me know that it's something that the company is working on and that my feedback is going to be passed along. Um, now, the last thing I want to show you is part of the power of the conversational experience, which is that I don't necessarily have to stick to this specific flow of questioning, meaning Kim can handle small talk in the way that a Google Assistant or a Siri could. So I could say something like, Tell me a joke, for example, or a, a question that we get more often than I would have guessed is, will you marry me? Uh, um, and Kim's able to understand that I'm asking for something back. I'm not answering the original question that she had asked. Uh, here, she can give me a joke, though not a, not a very good one, before jumping back to the question that she had. Now, this becomes useful for more uh, serious types of scenarios. Uh, for example, if we want to add uh, contextual FAQ type functionality. Um, now, a common question that we get from employees is something like, are you really anonymous? What's happening with my data? Even though we tell them in onboarding that uh, this is an area sometimes we have to continue to reassure people. Kim is able to understand that question, give a response to it before moving back to what she originally had. Uh, a lot of times we will work with organizations to add this kind of contextual FAQ functionality into um, the context of a conversation. So if I'm asking about the rollout of a specific software and the employee's not sure what that software is, we could add in uh, um, the ability to answer those kinds of questions within that conversation. Now, the last thing I wanna show you is um, kind of the next level of this flagging type ability that Kim has, which is instances where you don't want the chatbot to be handling a scenario. Uh, so if I was to say something like, um, I'm being bullied or I'm seeing some harassment or another type of issue where we want to get a human involved as quickly as possible, Kim is able to intelligently flag those issues and immediately put me up into an escalation flow. Um, now, we do have a very uh, careful job of treating anonymity here. In this case, I can choose to remain completely anonymous, in which case there will be an escalation report that goes up but it's only going to say, this is the issue that we saw. This is um, maybe the demographic area that we saw it in, but it's not going to get personal information. 
if I choose to share my information, we'll actually give an email so that um, this employee can be directly contacted by a human. So I will pause again for a second there. Uh, um, if there are any other questions about what Kim, the chatbot is capable Okay, then we're just gonna head over to the last thing that I wanna show you, which is how are these conversations actually working? How are we triggering them to go out? Uh, um, as I mentioned before, we have uh, over 50 out of the box um, conversational templates that you can use covering a variety of different use cases these days being a lot of remote work and business continuity, um, morale well-being, et cetera. You can see a lot of those templates here. Uh, um, now, there are two main user groups that log into the dashboard here. We have uh, company level admins, which can see data across the entire company, as well as managers, which are going to see data just for their teams. When new managers sign in, they're going to have the opportunity to select a goal. Uh, um, here, for example, in this uh, uh, test environment, we have goals of developing empathy and trust, increasing motivation, supporting remote work and business continuity, et cetera. Uh, um, those goals map to specific templates. So uh, um, I can come in, select a goal, and I'm gonna be recommended, these are the types of conversations that you should be having with your team based off of your goals. When I jump into a conversation itself, uh, um, it is pretty straightforward. Uh, I can select an audience. Once again, this is fairly flexible. I can choose the, uh, uh, it, it's pretty much selection by any user properties, any and slash or combination. Uh, um, and then the specific questions that are part of the conversation. So these are kind of what we call top level questions, meaning Kim is gonna always ask these questions if you send this conversation. Based off of how an employee responds to each specific question, Kim is going to branch out to different conversational trees to ask the right kinds of follow-up questions. Uh, now you can uh, edit these questions, you can rearrange them, you can add new ones uh, if you need to. It's all quite flexible in that sense, but if none of these pre-made templates work for you, you can also always create your own completely custom question sets here. <coughs> Now, one thing that we didn't uh, go deep into during the conversation with Kim this time was uh, different question types. So we had a lot of open free form kinds of questions, but if you wanted to do more traditional kinds of surveying or polling, um, you're able to do true false questions, multiple choice questions uh, um, in, in order to just set up quick button click kinds of things if you're pulsing very quickly. So I'll give a, another pause there if there's any questions about how um, the conversation creation side works or how Kim actually reaches out to employees. No, okay. Um, then in, in that case, uh, we've covered quite a bit of, of uh, functionality at a pretty breakneck pace. Uh, um, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up uh, the, um, the interactive demo piece of this. Uh, I'll give one more pause to see if there's questions that come in. Uh, if not, you can always reach out to me at Vivek at weave.ai, that's V-I-V-E-K at W-E-E-V-E.ai. Um, we're happy to have conversations, whether you're just curious about uh, um, AI and natural language processing, whether you have questions about how we could work with you, um, we're more than happy to schedule free consultations.